So, um, it's nice to be here and to talk about uh, sustainable way of holding management for recreational boating in the Baltic Sea region. Recreational boating, it is uh, uh, very much connected to, to the maritime tourism, naturally sustainable and, and things like that. So, and to proceed, <clears throat> first of all, uh, as always, we need to uh, keep in mind or know uh, the multi-level governance levels. And according to European Code of Conduct on Recreational Boating and Invasive Alien Species, the invasive alien species are currently identified as a major risk for native species and ecosystems on a global scale. It means maritime tourism is nice, but what is connected to that? First thing, in general, the biofoiling management actions shall follow the requirements of international convention on the control of harmful anti-fouling systems on ships, IMO, and in case of leisure boats less than 24 meters in length, the challenge is addressed by guidance for minimizing the transfer of invasive aquatic species as biofouling, hull fouling for recreational craft. So it is just to start with, and then uh, how the reality looks like is here and uh, here is just one example it is the Pernu Bay and um, before uh, there was a nice balance between um, bottom life and uh, it is basically Macoma Baltica which is uh, filtering the water and uh, improving the water situation for the for the people and others and after uh, mud crab arrived there is um, Benny communities, he is eating out mostly all of the Macoma and, and the water quality is not as good as before. It's just an example to start with. And here is a number of uh, maps of different non-indigenous species arrived and, um, for example, zebra mussels. First map, then uh, tiger scoot. You can see that it is almost all the way around the Estonian coast. Then, uh, Matzel Marencellaria species is a genus of annelids belonging to the family of Spionida and he is also occupying uh, most of the practically all of Estonian coastal waters and here is round goby fish which is for example eating a lot of Baltic herring um, uh, let's say next generation uh, on the spawning grounds Atlantic Rangia Harris Mud Club uh, Crab what was mentioned already here is mainly in the Pernu Bay in the Gulf of Riga 
and, and the results of his activity were shown before. So, and then it is the, how to say, the reality. We have the shipping, we have the uh, boating, and uh, as, as, as the result of that, we have this situation. Uh, a lot of changes based on new species coming in. And the next question is, okay, but what to do about that? We have here one running project, Baltic Sustainable Boating 2030, in a course of implementation of this inter interact Baltic Sea Region project. Um, Baltic Sustainable Boating, making leisure boating in the Baltic Sea fit for the post-pandemic boating tourism market. The attention is paid also to outlining the issue of sustainable biofouling management for recreational boating in the Baltic Sea region with aim to provide general guidance to policy and decision makers, experts, academicians, stakeholders, boaters and harbour operators in improving the competitiveness and effectiveness of existing maritime anti-fouling activities. So, and, and here is, we can speak a lot of about this picture, but it is the vision for the sustainable boating in the Baltic Sea region. Here is also mentioned that keep out invasive species. So, but we need to proceed. Uh, and here are some some technical details by a following of leisure boats uh, we have we had the complete project very important in this direction uh, proposal for the regional baltic by following management roadmap uh, it is stated that leisure boats may act to a large degree as a vector of secondary spread of uh, this between adjacent harbors, marinas, and other coastal regions. It is f further added that marinas play a similar role as ports, acting as recipient area of new species, which can be introduced there and spread further to other regions by fold laser boats. So, and then another um, document here by a falling assessment protocol, the sampling in marinas by settling plates and scrapping samples is addressing the question to what extent marinas represent a risk in introducing invasive species via laser boats through biofouling in the Baltic Sea. And here are a couple of images, settling plates to, to collect invasive, and here recommendation, uh, cleaning scrape for the removal of, of barnaxes and other biofouling organisms just to give you example how they look like and now uh, we can go to the state that to deal with something first of all we need the vision and regional vision it is Helcom vision we all know that by, uh, by uh, heart, a healthy Baltic Sea environment with diverse biological components functioning in balance, resulting in a good ecological status and supporting a wide range of sustainable economic and social activities. It means our natural resources, ecosystem services are the basis for economic and social activities. 
So that's very good. And then next thing is it was why, and next is what, what to do, actions. Only actions uh, can change the, change the situation. Uh, knowledge only is very nice, but knowledge only is changing nothing. Actions, we need the actions, and Helcom action, minimize the release of biocides from antifouling products in the marine environment, and preferably by 2027, replace the use of biocidal antifouling products with biocide free alternatives on structures, equipment, and recreational craft in cases not already subjected to the International Conventions on the Control of Harmful, harmful Antifouling Systems on Ships when available and environmentally and technically feasible. Next action, promote the development and use of effective environmentally sustainable biofouling man management techniques and antifouling systems on ships and recreational craft, including biocide-free alternatives to prevent biofouling by supporting related research and development activities in the Baltic Sea region and Helcom Action, promote environmentally sustainable recreational boating, including the use of best environmental practices through education and raising awareness of boat users and the personnel of marinas and guest harbors. Promote also green marinas and guest harbors by introducing eco-labeling of marinas and developing guidance and best practices documents by 2025 as a help for the marinas to reach criteria. So, and again, Helcom Action, strengthen cooperation with stakeholders in the development and implementation of sustainable biofouling management options by 2026 to minimize the introduction of invasive aquatic species, the release of hazardous substances and microplastics from antifouling systems, as well as enhancing energy efficiency. More clean they are, more energy efficient are the, our vessels. So, and also how to, how to do that? And here, uh, participatory argumentation and mutual learning. Uh, first of all, we have the proposal for regional Baltic biofoam management roadmap. Now it is already part of HELCOM documentation and guidance provided by this publication is used by Baltic Sustainable Boating 20, uh, project related participatory argumentation and mutual learning workshops to evaluate the biofouling management proactive and reactive best practices for conducting proactive inspection of the hull and the cleaning to minimize the attachment and accumulation of biofouling. And finally, Um, the, almost finally, sustainable biofouling management, participatory argumentation, and mutual learning processes. Argumentation and mutual learning processes are facilitating the common understanding among managers, scientists, regulators, decision makers, volunteers, and others of the social dimension of recreational boating common understanding as a basis for Baltic sustainable biofouling management. So we are starting with multi-level governance and we are here with the common understanding as a basis 
for Baltic Sustainable Biofouling Management. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your yeah. uh, presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? We have one over here. Yes. Again, thanks for a very interesting talk and sharing the beautiful maps, which contents perhaps wasn't that beautiful. But uh, so if we look at these non-indigenous non species along the Estonian coast, if we look backwards, so when, when these non-indigenous species appeared in our waters, is it gradual process or have been the certain times when, uh, when things really got out of hand? Um. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, let's say, uh, historically speaking, uh, we as a marine biologist also, we have um, marine systems research, uh, have been uh, fixing, uh, uh, you know, different indigenous species coming in time by time by time by time. It means that uh, they are already here, then we uh, can see them. Um, we normally not see them uh, as a part of the holding. It means where they are already swimming and running around. Yes. Uh, was there a specific time? So, for example, when the stone opened up after the silver time, more boats were coming in, and then things, uh, more of these non-indigenous species appeared, or, or has this been a gradual process starting already from the beginning of, of, yeah. of shipping? Now I got your question. Uh, answer is uh, how they are appearing here. They are coming with vessels and boats. And, and uh, uh, as far as I remember, vessels have been uh, running all the time and boats almost all the time, at least by regions. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Um, uh, on one of your slides, uh, you were mentioning um, anti-biofouling structures that they plan uh, to use instead of the biocide-based uh, uh, chemicals. Uh, yeah. uh, do you know uh, what is the, like the active ingredient or the, or let's say, principal component in these anti-biofouling structures? Yeah. Thank you. I could answer this way, um, even when these slides will be uh, um, available to all of us, you can see before the, in, in the low part of the slide, some um, web uh, webs opening uh, some documents you can get the answer to that. Yeah, but this is very special, uh, special area, quickly, quickly developing. What, what is clear that old, older things, old things, they are very dangerous for the nature. They are preventing falling, but they are killing the nature around. And that's why we have even IMO uh, regulation about that to prevent that and then and then what are the new things it is the industry is developing new things which are not um, dangerous and and it is improving 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 but but there is no legal um, act saying that what is 
accepted only what we have, what is prohibited. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.